Welcome to season 11, Spotlight on the Arts. Lights, camera, confidence. The impact of an arts education. My name is Brad Carter, and as always, I am joined here with the jazzy and jolly Jordan Vasallo. Love alliteration. We are artists in residence with Sydney Catholic Schools. In this season, we explore the importance of arts, not just in education, but for life. It allows us to thrive and connect and make sense of the world around us. In this episode, we chat with arts educators across Sydney Catholic Schools and hear their insight into how they excel in the arts subjects. Let's get to it. Byron, why should students study an arts elective? Look, I really believe a quality arts education is the key to enriching young people and for them to go forward to leave our schools and have rich lives that are rewarding. You know, the old saying is that people can't live by bread alone, and I think that's very true. To have experiences that enrich your life and make it a beautiful experience, uh, I think we can equip students to go forward and have those types of lives. Madeline, why should students study an art selective? So choosing a arts-based elective I think is really important as it gives the students a great way to express themselves um, and I guess really connect with something they genuinely are passionate about. Usually those electives are a chance to kind of move away from some of the other mainstream subjects and really delve into an area of passion and the arts-based electives in particular are great ways for someone to show a bit of an expression, have that kind of freedom to really um, hone in on some skills they might already have or as well develop new skills. Byron, you're a man of wisdom. Tell, Tell us. us what is the key to success for your students? Look, my philosophy has always been enjoy what you're doing. If students come into the classroom and they enjoy making art, if they enjoy engaging with art, if they enjoy writing about art, if there's pleasure in that, they're going to learn, they're going to be motivated. And I always do the best I can to get, to have conversations and find out what young people are interested in and direct them down paths where they're gonna find success. Danielle, how do you develop students' acting skills and performance techniques in preparation for the HSC? When students are approaching the HSC, particularly the performance aspects of it, whether that's their monologue or their group performance, uh, I guess developing their acting skills and challenging them to refine those skills is really instrumental for success. For me, one thing that I really uh, have enjoyed seeing um, growth in my students is through um, getting students up on stage frequently to practice um, and not just for myself but for other group members, um, other class members, sometimes other teachers if you're lucky enough to have a drama teacher or another teacher who's interested and always kind of I guess instill a growth mindset into those students so um, how can I keep getting better and giving them feedback that's really specific and gives them an example of how they can find more depth in the character or how they can really understand the motivation of their character so that they're approaching their choices with, I guess, an informed understanding of the text, but also um, new feedback that's appropriate throughout the process. Byron, why is it important to cultivate a rich arts culture within your school community? Building a culture around the arts, the visual arts, dance, drama, music in a school is very important. And I think over my lifetime, I've seen Australia go from, you know, the old days of white Australia to a rich multicultural society. And I think one of the best ways that we can all come to understand each other is through appreciating each other's music and art and theater. And I think schools and teachers should be working to build that level of communication and appreciation through the arts. Look, I think the most important thing in the arts is that arts is a shared experience. It's about collaborating. So I've, I've been very lucky over the years. I've led uh, professional learning groups, for example, where I've taken younger art teachers and helping them. And I think learning together is one of the great pleasures in life. It's one thing to have your own curiosity about the arts and an arts education, but to be able to share that and learn together, I think is very important. So having an arts department in your school that is generous, that allows people to work together, to appreciate what each other has to offer uh, culturally, I think is a very important thing. And it's a good 
foundation for building a solid arts department in the school. Maddie, how have you applied dance strategies in cross-curricular activities? So I'm a high school mathematics teacher teaching maths all the way through to extension in year 12. Um, as well as a dance teacher, we're working in both the curriculum and extracurricular areas. Um, there's actually a lot of quite close connections between dance and maths. So a big one is that pattern recognition. So, and I guess it leans both ways in that the students at dance have that strong um, actual number sense and recognition of patterns and actually able to often kind of reason and see things and problem solve in quite a strong way that can really help in the maths as well as the students that have those strengths in maths. Um, I think it really helps in particular in the choreography sense in dance when you're trying to think about spacing and where groups are going to move and things like that. Um, I think there's a lot of links as well between the dance and maths. I often say in both areas, you know, it's the sort of thing where we don't practice till we get it right. We practice till we can't get it wrong. And that goes for whether it's a dance routine or working on some of your fluency and mathematics skills. So there's quite strong links there um, as well. They both are the sort of thing that require discipline and that discipline that dancers often have from that um, regular practice and really fine honing technique and skills is something that can really transfer into successful math students as well because again that practice and being able to take an idea practice it and then apply it in a different space is something that you would be constantly doing in maths too so having that kind of experience physically in dance can then transfer into that I guess in a bit more of a mental way in mathematics as well. Byron why should parents encourage their children to study the arts? Over 45 years of teaching the arts, I've noticed that enrolments in art subjects go up and down with the economic cycle. I would say to parents, don't be afraid of having your children engage with the visual arts. The future, particularly in technology, is a creative future. If your students leave school with creative subjects under their belt and creative abilities, they're going to be set for a very productive future. So that's it for season 11 of Spotlight on the Arts, Lights, Camera Confidence. We are so thankful for everybody who's taken part in this podcast and vodcast. A special thanks to my co-host, Brad Carter, and our amazing producer behind the camera and on the desk, Iris McGill. Thanks, Iris. Legend. Next time is season 12, Spotlight on the Arts, to be confirmed. But watch this space. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials, on our link tree where you can see all of our previous episodes and see the amazing work that we are doing here at Sydney Catholic Schools. But for now, so long. Farewell. Auf and goodbye. To you and you and you and you and you. Hey! <laughs> 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 This episode was recorded at the studios of Southern Cross Catholic College in Burwood. We respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of this place where many stories have been told, artworks created and dances celebrated and shared for thousands of years. <laughs>